What's going on, people? This is your man, Derek Terry, host of I'm Not Complaining, I'm Just Saying, where if you're going to complain, you better bring some solutions to the table. I welcome you to my garage. I'm doing uh, the show out here. Um, no guests today, so I'm somewhat inviting you to my home. Also invite you to listen to my little cuz. His name is uh, Antonio Hancock, better known as Saxon Rose, and his uh, original tune called Feel True. So welcome, 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 welcome. So, as the late great Congressman John Lewis stated, get in good trouble, necessary trouble. And that's exactly what I expect to do on today's show entitled School to Prison Pipeline in Charles County. Who is to blame? During my 15 years of living in Charles County, as well as my 20 years in public education, as well as my over 30 years in mentoring, coaching, combination of educating youth in the DMV, especially in Baltimore City, Hartford County, Alexandria, Virginia, as well as Charles County, I've witnessed and I acknowledge that there is a school to prison pipeline. You know, but myself and countless others, we work, we have worked tirelessly to make sure that we can try to eradicate this. Let me re um, reiterate to some people before I get started. There are some cities that need some major, major law enforcement and criminal justice reform. I do believe there are bad cops and good cops. But so-called good cops that remain silent or defend bad cops, in my mind, are just bad, if not worse, than the bad cops. But when I think of my personal encounter, I've personally been harassed as a, you know, as a young kid in Edgewood, you know, whether I was riding my bike, um, whether I was running or riding, um, driving my car in Baltimore County, wherever it may be, um, where I was falsely accused of loitering at uh, McDonald's in Bel Air, where some of my, my one of my friends, but there was some white boys that were skateboarding and they didn't get in trouble, they didn't get caught for loitering. And, you know, back in the day when I actually when I first moved here, where I routinely got stopped um, by the sheriff's department for driving while black or driving while having too dark of a tent on my car, although it was legal. But things have changed. And from my personal um, point of view, we simply do not have those bad cop issues that we had some time ago in Charles County. And there are some in Charles County that seem to believe that Sheriff Barry, as well as the SROs, or what we call school, res school resource officers, are the root of the school to prison pipeline and I respectfully disagree. In a couple of minutes, I'm gonna share some data. And as my old Towson University, or at the time Towson State stats professor would always tell the class, I'm gonna give you some data for your ass. And I'm gonna give you some data for your ass. Um, we will analyze some data and try to see if there's any reasonable justification for removing SROs from Charles County Public Schools or is it about a minute few who just want to jump on the bandwagon of those specific jurisdictions that actually has systemic issues with law enforcement versus providing some narrative for their political or financial purposes? But first, as always, let me get to my segment called What the Hell is Derek Complaining About Now? So, attention Charles County. We don't have the it factor. Let me say it again. Charles County, we don't have the it factor, not IT, but in some cases we really don't have that either. We aren't a major sports, entertainment, recreational, or tourist de destination, although we pay one of the highest property taxes in Maryland with little amenities to show for it. Well, yeah, maybe we'll get some, I don't know. Our major source of revenue is property taxes. Our largest employer is Charles County Public Schools. 
and our main attractions are the free to the general public, beautiful and spacious bike trails and environmental masterpieces. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot. We also have the inside mall and we have a lot of car dealerships. We have several social media groups and social media professors who continue to share misinformation as well as propaganda. As I speak, some are literally posturing themselves with certain elected officials or so-called groups to put together another all black slate or all woman slate to fight against Sheriff Barry, but fail to understand Maryland law, which is Senate Bill 1265, which is the Maryland Safe to Learn Act of 2018 created in the wake of an increase in school shootings. So in summary, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, you can research it yourself, but in summary, Senate Bill 1265 requires every school system to file a report with the Maryland Center for School Safety that demonstrates, one, that each public school has an SRO assigned to the school, or if no SRO is assigned to a public school, that sufficient local law enforcement coverage will be provided to the school. This all must be annually submitted to the governor and general assembly. So those delegates that we have, they should be well informed of this law with the understanding of why we have SROs. So if you're one of those elected officials that want the SROs removed, I hope you are telling the constituents what the process is based on the Maryland law. But keep in mind, if you don't have this plan in place, as far as if you don't want SROs, you must have some plan of action to provide safeguards for those school systems. So, but what I feel is that some are putting unnecessary energy into targeting Sheriff Barry for enforcing the same laws that unfortunately don't seem to understand or they don't know about. Under Sheriff Barry's leadership, the overall culture of the Sheriff Department has dramatically improved for the better and some would know this if they would, I don't know, pick up the phone, doo -doo -doo, you know, rather than keyboard warriors, email them, arrange a meeting, or actually get out there to see what they've been doing in the community um, for, since he's been here. So for the complainers, what I ask is what is your plan? So um, that's my segment of what the hell is Derek complaining about? And I will be right back. Okay, so welcome back. So now we're gonna get into that data that um, I was talking about. So let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. Um, oh, and I'm hoping this works. So. Okay, so like I said, the title of this show is School to Prison Pipeline in Charles County. Who is to blame? So just a brief overview of School to Prison Pipeline. According to the ACLU, the School to Prison Pipeline is a disturbing national trend wherein children are funneled out of public schools into the juvenile and criminal justice systems. So we have a couple key players that come into play. Law enforcement, our you know, our courts, our state's attorney's office, those are all lumped in together. And you can also say the prison as well. Those are all lumped into, um, you know, our school to prison pipeline. So let's go ahead and look at the data. Who is the blame? Well, I, I, there's a lot of people to blame, but I'm just putting up here what I hear. Um, I'm not necessarily saying who is to blame, but we were going to go down this list. So some would say that it's the uh, Charles County Sheriff's Department who enforces the law. They are to blame. Some would say the elected officials are to blame. Elected officials make the laws. State's attorney office. They use the law and evidence to acquire a guilty verdict resulting in punishment or discipline. They could also be to blame. Judges whether juvenile or adult, they grant sentences based on a guilty verdict. They could be to blame too, right? Teachers, administrators, school, they could also be to blame. As a former teacher, I've had people blame me for uh, 
correcting a student or writing a student up or whatever it may be, resulting in a punishment or discipline. But the biggest argument that some have with teachers is that, you know, maybe they lack the cultural sensitivity training, informed biases, inconsistent zero, pol zero tolerance policies targeted at minorities, lack of staff population proportionate with student population. Those are just some of the key factors of why some people may blame teachers, administrators, and the school. Also, neighborhood environment. So a lot of times people say you are a product of your environment. Someone who has lived pretty much all over the world, you know, I grew up in Edgewood. Um, it wasn't Baltimore City, but it, it, it wasn't uh, Tyson's Corner neither. So we, we had our share of issues, but we also had a community concept where everyone looked after one another. Everyone doesn't have that advantage. You know, my cousin grew up in a, you know, Somerset Projects, you know, his ultimate goal was to make it to his 15th birthday. When he told me that, I took it upon myself to make sure that he would see it to his 15th birthday and beyond. So you don't have to be a product of your environment or the neighborhood, but some people could easily blame that. You and I, I've already touched on that. If you're not part of the um, solution, then you're part of the problem. You can say, well, you know, it's not my problem. It's not my kid. I don't care what they do. You could be just as much as blame. Parents, if you have children, you owe it to yourselves and to them to at least teach them right from wrong. You do. doesn't mean that they're going to listen, but you owe it to yourselves to teach them right from wrong. And students, you have to take some accountability too. Responsibility for your actions and choices. You know, if you know clearly what you're doing, you can't get upset if you get caught. But... Like I said, when you take all these into blame, somebody could easily say that each, each one of those pe um, um, people that I mentioned, organizations or whatever it may be that I mentioned, could be the blame for why there's a school to prison pipeline in Charles County. Now, I pulled this from Charles County's um, website as well as from the uh, Maryland Public School website, so you can look at this for yourself. But I only collected data from 2015 to 2019 because the data is not there for 2019 to 20. But if you look at the overall suspensions, there were 10,348 suspensions. Two thirds of those were criminal violations that were handled by Charles County Public School. SROs arrested 660 for criminal violations. So when you take that population over a period of four years, you get 103,996,000, 103, which accounts for what Sheriff Barry has always said, less than 1% of students arrested by SROs. It was actually 0 0.06. But some people are, are, are saying that there is this systemic school, I mean, school to prison pipeline in Charles County. And there may be. But you can't necessarily say that that's the fault of the sheriff's department. The schools there, you can see the decline in suspensions have been low, but we do know that a vast majority of those suspensions are minorities, specifically black males. So that is something that we continuously have to work on. And just to summarize, um, I had talked about the data the, uh, that I couldn't get 2019, 2020, because it's not available. But I want you to pay attention to this. The following are arrestable offenses. Possession of dangerous weapons, attack, threatened, bought students or staff, committed arson, fire, or possession of explosions. I should have said explosives, but we'll say explosions. Or committed sex offenses. Those are arrestable offenses. And remember, there's only 660 out of the 10,000 or so that could have been arrestable offenses, that two thirds were handled by Charles County Public Schools. And the SRO and the school administrator, in most cases, they are in communication if the SRO decides to arrest a student. So it's not like, oh, I'm gonna arrest them. They're in communication. That I can assure you. I did a non-scientific poll on Facebook across three separate diverse groups. So my goal was to get 1,000 respondents. And as of today, I received, and I'll show you, 
on the next slide, but participants were not able to con comment and they had to select yes, no, or unsure because I didn't want the poll to be tainted or persuaded or any way. So I wanted just to put down what they felt. And the poll, what the poll question asks is, should SROs be removed from Charles County Public Schools? I just wanted to know because I've been hearing all this static, but I haven't seen any data. I haven't seen a survey from these organizations. All I've heard is this and yip and yip and yip, but they have provided no data. But these same people want data from the Sheriff Department and from the public school system, but you won't give up no damn data. That what upsets me. Let me stop because I'm, let me just stop and keep moving because I'm kind of, uh, kind of winding down with the data. But you can understand my frustration is that if you want something, I better see the data to support it. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but data needs to support it. And that's one thing that I said in that bullet right there. So, Right here, I polled a thousand, or I wanted a thousand responses, but I ended up getting 462, which is 46%, which is still good because in most cases you only get maybe 20%. But out of that, 428 or 93% of a very diverse, um, and a very diverse poll said no, they want the SROs to remain in school. 19 or 4% said they want them out and 3% or 15 were unsure. So like I said, this is a, a non-scientific poll, but it's something. It's, it's some information that somebody could use. I'm giving you something. All I ask is for these organizations or these particular people, give me something and I haven't seen it. Now, the SROs versus school safety officers. So for those who want SROs out or they want them to stay in and replace them either with school safety officers or no replacement, here are the pros and cons. And I'm speaking from 20 years of experience of working with SROs, also working with school safety officers, and also working with a system that have their own police department within the school system. So if you look at the pros and cons, pros, cheaper. No cost to Charles County Public Schools um, because the SROs are paid by Charles County by the Sheriff Department. They pay for their health insurance, they pay for their pension. School don't pay for Jack. Okay. We pay for it, but the school don't pay for it, so it's not coming out of their budget. They're all trained in law enforcement. Quicker response time to major incident, you know, it typically takes one to two minutes because they're in the school. Accessibility of school building and communication with first responders. It's kind of common sense right there. They participate in, in staff and school or school events. They have the legal authority to arrest student staff or visitors of school who violate the law. Low turnover rate, therefore creating positive relationships with student staff and the community. Now, the school safety officers, you know, for those who don't have a plan that don't want anybody in there, you got to have something in there in place. So I gave you something. Pros, they're cheaper if contracted because the school system doesn't have to pay the pension or the health benefits. The more visible throughout the school because typically there's about three to six security officers per school and the schools I've been in is about around three to six. They can help reduce internal and external crime and or student code of conduct violations and they can also establish a positive relationship with students and staff. Now the cons and these are just cons I've heard from people and some of them you know I agree with but you, you weigh out you, you weigh the pros and cons. Unlimited accessibility for any Charles County sheriff to enter school buildings. I don't know if that's true. That's what I've heard someone say or some people say. I don't know if that's true. They can just take their card and just go into school. I, I, I've never heard that, but it could be. They have legal authority to arrest students, staff, and visitors of school who violate the law. Some people see that as wrong. You should not arrest students or staff in school. And to some degree, I agree. I don't think elementary kids should be uh, arrested or in handcuffs, especially in the presence of their students, because they're small. If you as an officer can't handle that little small student without putting physical handcuffs or whatever, something's wrong with you. But that just, that's the difference of opinion. And they have the legal authority to carry and or use firearms. You know, they're a law enforcement officer. They're not, they're supposed to carry it all the time. Some people see that as a bad thing. 
And then there are some who lack cultural sensitivity and de-escalation strategies um, with minors or for minors. Now, for school safety offers, cheaper. And it's, that's a pro and con. You get what you pay for. It's that simple. You get what you pay for. If contracted not renewed, there will, there will be a bidding war because these um, safety officers, school safety officers have to be in place with that contract. And if you have an issue with that particular agency, now you got to get rid of them and find somebody else. If contracted, there's a high turnover, therefore creating little to un, little or unstable relationship with the school and the community. They have no legal authority to arrest students, staff, or visitors to school, so they have to end up calling the Charles County Sheriff's Department, who could be anywhere from five to 15 minutes um, for them to get there because they're back on the beat. Excuse me. And then they also could lack cultural sensitivity as well as the escalation strategy for minors. And if they're not contracted, they're gonna be expensive, meaning that now Charles County Public Schools is gonna to have to create a line item that has never been part of the budget that, will, well, since I've been here, that will result in pay raises, pension, and health care. So hopefully um, you enjoyed that, what my professor said, some data for your ass for those um, who just always saying stuff. But what I want to do now is, you know, how do you help prevent school to prison pipeline in Charles County Public Schools? Because that is what people have been saying. Not me, but that's what people have been saying. Without data or the pulse of the community, organizations and individuals do not speak for Charles County. You don't speak for me. I'm telling you right now, you don't speak for me until you can provide some data, something to back it up. Yes, I understand that there are some issues out there we need to address, but what I get sick and tired of is people opening up their mouth, but yet they provide no data. They don't wanna speak with the sheriff, they don't wanna speak with the school system, all they wanna do is run their mouth, provide some freaking data. You don't speak for me, you don't speak for Charles County. You speak for your organization or you speak for yourself. That's my take on that. Organizations and or individuals can help set policy based on proven data, back to data again, if there are proven systemic issues within Charles County Sheriff's Department and youth by talking with our elected officials to make the change in Annapolis. So we talk with our delegates, we talk with our state senator, um, we talk with our commissioners but you have that conversation and provide the data. Yes, there are isolated cases where th there may be something that needs to be dealt with, but is it systemic? When you change a law, it, you know, it's less something drastic and needs to be systemic. Just my take on it. If issues arise, have that difficult candid solution driven conversation with the SRO in the school, the sheriff's department, that specific school, and the administrators of that school. Have that conversation. Provide more rigorous, and this is for the school system and the law enforcement as well, provide more rigorous training or professional development and cultural sensitivity, restorative practices, and de-escalation strategies. Charles County, don't, don't be upset as far as school system. Y'all stuff sucks, I'll be honest with you. It, it is... It is not the best. You are behind the curve. You need to catch up, okay? Hopefully you're doing it, but you need to catch up, especially in your professional development, especially in your restorative practices. You need to catch up. I've been around, so I've seen how other schools and systems do it. We can be better. Hopefully we're working on it. So I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, Specifically speaking with my people again, and I'm talking about my black people. So for my white brothers and sisters and Asians and whatever other brothers and sisters, I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to my people. And I'm gonna put this, where's it at? Oh, here it is. You need to attend the 12 week Citizen Police Academy, which was started by Sheriff Barry four years ago that approximately 60 to 70 Charles County residents attended where 80% were white and approximately 20% were black. So this application, I don't know if you can see it, 
I actually signed up for it. I didn't need to sign up for it because I'm well aware of what they do, but I signed up for it just to see who signs up for it. Because if you don't sign up for it and you start running your mouth, I'm going to say, okay, why didn't you sign up for it? You're not even trying to figure out what they do. You got to figure out what somebody does and where they stand before you start casting judgment. So you have the opportunity. Remember, 80% that joined were white, 20% were black. About 95% are complaining or my people. And you know who you are. So if you're complaining, you need to do the work. Okay? So got your application. Get it. Also, Charles, back to you, Charles County Public Schools. You need to hire more diverse administrators and teachers proportionate with student population that it serves. This has been going on since I've been here. It is no excuse, no excuse at all why we don't have a balance when it comes to school administrators and teachers. You can't tell me it's about the pay, but I made this argument. If I come from Mississippi or Utah or Minnesota, whatever it may be, they're not getting paid the money we're getting paid here. So if they're here, they're getting paid more. And it's just that simple. You can't keep using money. You have to welcome them here. I was a teacher in Charles County. I left twice. The first time I left, no one bothered to even ask me why. They didn't give me an exit survey, nothing. They were like, peace. I taught special ed. I taught math. Well, actually, I didn't teach. I was an IEP facilitator. I'm sorry. But I was an IEP facilitator, but I still had, I still could teach math or whatever it may be. I was a hot commodity. Not in Charles County. Not in Charles County. And the second time I left, I just got tired. You know, it was just years of, of frustration, and I just got tired of dealing with the bureaucracy and the BS. So now I got this platform where I can talk about it and bring about some changes because they have no choice but to listen. They don't have to listen to you when you're a teacher. Believe me, most of the time they don't listen to you. They don't listen to you when they come in masses or from time to time the union or association will get involved. But they don't listen to us. They can say they do. They really don't because they did all this stuff be fixed. All right. Uh, that is my opinion. And what else? Ensure staff and schools are consistently monitoring the hallways during the transition of classes. So that is typically a, a teacher's duty. They have to come out in the hallway, monitor classes. And when we don't, that's when students say, uh-oh, nobody's out here, and they start doing the do. So we have to make sure that we're out there monitoring where you are, not me, because I'm not there anymore. Um, regularly enforce the student code of conduct or don't use it. Meaning teachers have the same value as administrators. If Joe or Judy or um, Leon, whatever, cuss a teacher out to the umpteenth power and all they get is detention, but they do the same thing administrator and get three to four day suspension, there's something wrong with that picture. There's something wrong. I'm not saying suspension is, is, is uh, all, uh, all, well, I'm not saying suspension is something that you should do because it, to be honest with you, I don't even know if you can suspend the student from cussing you out. I know I couldn't, but you won't come back in my class. I, that, not that day, mm -mm, but half. So, but be consistent. And parents and students, when you know that you are dead wrong, man or woman up and take some responsibility. And now I'm not saying that there are cases when students get in trouble, it's not their fault. But when you know it's your, you did it and you wrong, don't make up excuses, take responsibility. As a parent, you know if your child is, is, was wrong. You know it. Rather than say make excuses, let's say, you know what, my child was wrong, how can we deal with it? And if you're looking for a seat at the table, you better come with more than just complaints. Bring some solutions, okay? So. Hopefully, and I'm about to wrap up, but hopefully I was able to bring a balance to what I'm talking about. And when we say who is the blame, I don't believe SROs are to blame for the school to prison pipeline in Charles County. That may be different in other jurisdictions, but in Charles County, I don't believe it. And there's just not enough data to support it. So, but before I wrap up, let me say this. And I'm talking to my people again. The constant attacks on Charles County Sheriff Department and our first black sheriff are getting tiresome. These black folks, my black folks, are complaining and fighting the wrong person and organization 
at some point, the truth will set you free. Or you'll be free to never seek the truth. That is entirely up to you. All this misinformation and targeting of SROs is unwarranted. Are there bad apples? Yes. Which is why it's important to make formal complaints and hopefully justice is served. But the data simply does not support the cry for file in terms of our SROs in the school system. Well, Charles County public school system. When there are isolated incidents of wrongdoing, it has been handled under Sheriff Barry. If it was not, please personally contact me and if you're not willing to reach out to Sheriff Barry, then I'll reach out um, to him for you with your permission. But you can't solve a problem if you don't address the problem, nor if you don't get in contact with those that leave. You just can't. And I'll personally address it for you if you fear some retaliation, which I don't know where that's coming from, because I heard that as well. Or, um, but anyways. Um, but this is why it's imperative to call, email, or arrange a meeting with Sheriff Barry so you can work together for a better Charles County versus creating something that's not there. But in closing, the school to prison pipeline is real, and has been extensive as long as I can remember, but it's not, it has not been reality for, well, feel like this, it does not have to be reality for our students, for our youth. It doesn't. And it takes a village concept. It really doesn't. You know, with properly trained teachers, staff, law enforcement, as well as holding parents and students accountable, it involves a holistic approach. Every child is not always in control of his or her choices, and everyone does not have the same opportunities needed. However, we all can learn to take responsibility and realize there is no such thing as bad kids, but rather good kids that make bad choices. I believe Charles County is a great village but we can be greater if we learn to be less decisive and start working, I'm sorry, divisive, not decisive, to be less divisive and start working together versus in our little cliques. So before I go, I wanna make sure that I give a shout out to my unofficial sponsors. That means they did this for free. Their opinions are, um, they don't share my opinions, they have their own opinions but I want to make sure that I'm giving businesses an opportunity to get some free advertising. So let me share my screen real quick. Um, oops, hold up for a second. There we go. So uh, give me a second, dealing with technology. And all right, so we're going to start with Grill 13. Well, grill number 13 are Sugar Lips, and this was established in 2013. And Sugar Lips and grill number 13 are for hometown, homemade goodness, from cakes to catering. They have you covered, located in central Waldorf, Maryland, excuse me, at 3016 Waldorf Place. I forgot the address, but if, if, you, if you're from Waldorf, you know where it's at. If not, contact me. Place, excuse me. They are here to serve the community. You can call them at 301-645-2983, especially if you want some of them sugar lip cakes that Katie makes. And cakes are delicious. And I know Katie, I gotta get one. I'm trying, I'm trying to watch my uh, pre-diabetes. So I I'm gonna get on it, but you just gotta give me time. Next. We got my man, Chef Kendall Selby, Middleton Hall. He has a, a buffet, all you can eat brunch on Sunday. And if you look at the menu, he has smothered pork chops, turkey bacon, fried fish, Big Mama's fried chicken. What else he got up in there? Grits, home fries. And then we got some fresh fruit. So we got all that and some fresh fruit. I hear you, chef. You still won't give people a balance after eating all that grease and stuff. But hey, you got some fresh fruit. And you can top it off with some, well, 21 and older. You can top it off with some bottomless mimosas for those who drink. Um, I don't drink, so. Uh, but 
my hope is that um, if you get an opportunity to go, you can call and make reservations at 301-932-8100. And lastly, at Galazio Restaurants, they are presenting Jazzy Summer Nights, August 29th at 8 o'clock, where the featured artist will be Miss Lynn and No Hidden Agenda. There is no cover. Um, it's limited to outdoor seating, so you must call for a reservation because of, you know, um, corona. We have to practice social distancing, so it cannot be a full capacity. So it's, you're highly encouraged to um, make reservations on their website, which is galazio-restaurant.com, or 301-392-9500. Okay? So... I am about to wrap up, but what I will say, and, and I'll say it again, is that Charles County is a great village, but we can be greater if we learn to be less divisive and start working together versus in our little clips. I hope I was able to get in good trouble, necessary trouble. I'm gonna say this again. I'm hoping that I got in good trouble, but necessary trouble. But hey, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Peace and blessings. Don't forget to catch me on YouTube. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying where you can subscribe or catch me on Facebook. Hey, and next show, last show before we take an eight week break. So I look forward. So until then, I'll take you out with my cousin, Antonio Hancock better known as Saxel Rose, feel true. If you're not true to yourself, who do you expect to believe in? I'll take you home. Peace and blessings. Thank you.